Hey, uh, this is Esplin227. My aunt and uncle wanted me to do a video on 2012. This is part two of that video. I'll recap very quickly. There are AFPs and AUPs. AFPs are absolute falsifiable prophecies. AUPs are amorphous unfalsifiable prophecies. AFPs are like the 2012 prediction and the family radio debacle. You know how they said the world was going to end in March, and it didn't. And now he says it's going to end in some other date. It doesn't matter. AUPs are like Revelations, the last book in the Quran, the prophecy in the Tanakh, Nostradamus' prophecies, and pretty much most Native American, Mesoamerican, and pagan religions. Now what I didn't talk about in my last video is how AUPs and AFPs can work together. Before I do that, I'd like to mention mention something interesting that my aunt and or uncle said. I don't remember which one. I asked for clarification on exactly what they wanted me to talk about in the 2012 video. And what they said was something to the degree of how all these prophecies are pointing to 2012. They like my opinion on it. Now, I, I find it interesting that they said all these prophecies, all, all this hype. It is a perfect example of how AFPs parasitize AUPs. AFPs are specific. They give a date and they're vague about what's going to happen on that date. Notice that there's a lot of debate about what's going to happen when 2012, December 21 occurs. Um, some people think it'll be a spiritual awakening. Some people think it'll be like the movie 2012. Others think there'll be a pole shift. Others think there'll be an entire crust shift. A crustal shifting. That's not a real thing, so I don't know the word for it. <laughs> everything from a comet named Nibiru smashing into us to planetary alignments, galactic alignments, and solar flares destroying our magnetosphere. Now, while AFPs are vague about what will happen and specific on when it will happen, AUPs are the opposite. They're usually rather specific about what will happen. Generally, our God is right. He will crush all of you beneath his feet. The world will end, and we will live and you will die. But the signs for that are always in metaphor, always vague, always applicable to almost any single century, millennium, or even decade you are in. You can always pick a few countries, a few world leaders, and a few conflicts, and you have yourself a Megiddo movie. You, that movie could have taken place, that was a movie about the rapture and the end of the world. That movie could have taken place in any century. It took place in modern times. You could have set it, set it in the 1900s, the 1800s, the 1700s, and you will find people and things that fit in the prophecy perfectly. But they still believe in it. Every generation believes they are in the end times. Even the apostles believed they were in the end times. Nostradamus' prophecies, again, very vague. He hints at political things. Supposedly, he even predicted Hitler. I find those word games a little dubious. Uh, change the words around and they make something else. Well, yeah. If you do that for anything, it can be an anagram for anything. You can find something in your time that fits with that. As for his reference to Muslims, people seem to be forgetting about the Crusades. That did occur. They did have problems with Muslims back then. Um... But again, I'm going off topic. The Mayan prophecies. So AFPs and AUPs feed off each other. In the end, AUPs will always win because they're amorphous and unfalsifiable. Um, AFPs will come and go. 
and AUPs become all the stronger for it. The most insidious part of AUPs is that they predict AFPs. They say there will be false prophets talking about the end of the world. But only a select few or none know when the world will end. Now, the Mayan thing is interesting because it was never originally meant to be a uh, prophecy. There are two types of calendars. There is a short cyclical calendar, like what we use. It goes a year ahead, and it always cycles. Um, you might have things like leap year and such, but basically, it's not really done retro or proactively. It's all retroactive. Um, you can calculate forward by simply counting up and taking into account oddities like leap year. Whereas a long count calendar is based on something in the future, like in this case, astrological occurrences, like us shifting from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. In astrology, the sun's position appears to move through each zodiac. It always goes back to its starting position in December. Right now it's in the age of Pisces. It moves backwards a few degrees every year. It's shifting from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. It will officially have passed that threshold in 2012, December 2021. Now that's when it was set up to end. They were basing it on that astrological shift, so naturally their calendar ended at that point. That was the end of a uh, Ba'aktan. Now, the Mayan long calendar is broken into smaller units. The smallest is a day, then there's 20 days, a uinal. 18 uinals make a ton, that's about 360 days. 20 tons make a ka ton, and 20 ka tons make a ba ka ton. That's about 394 years. The current ba ka ton ends, you guessed it, 2012, December 21st. Now, in Mayan literature, something else is also going to happen on that date. There's a strong tradition of different worlds, world ages, it's called. Now, according to Mayan religion, God made the world once. It was a failed attempt to make the world. He tried a second time. He also failed to achieve any type of balance. A third time, he failed as well. The fourth time, it actually worked. It was a success. That's the world we supposedly live in. But supposedly, that ends at this Bakhtan. And the fifth world starts the age of Aquarius. There's a lot of debate about what the Mayans meant, but what it comes down to is this. They have prophecies that go past that time. It clearly was simply the end of their calendar. They have prophecies that count buck ton plus this many years. Um, it's the equivalent of BC and AD. They do have dates past buck ton. They just add numbers to the end so that those who continue the calendar can put them correctly where they should go. They also have doomsday prophecies. Now, the civilization ended. What happened was when people saw their doomsday prophecies, they naturally put it at the end of when their calendar ended, which gave the illusion that that's what the Mayans were saying, that they were saying that at the end of our calendar, this will happen. Now, it, it's quite clear the Mayans thought that that will happen way past that. But even if they didn't, what's the significance of that? So one Mesoamerican society says the world's going to end in 2012? I, I don't mean to be facetious or arrogant, but I think we know more than they do. Yeah, they uh, had an amazing mathematical system. If they made it, it could have been the Olmec, which is an older civilization that they took some stuff from. 
But again, even if they didn't, they, they didn't know anything. Now, we do know things, and sometimes our knowledge gets us into trouble. For instance, people know some things about the universe, but not enough of the fundamental laws to keep them from delving into pseudoscience. In my next video, I'll be talking about the pseudoscientific claims about the significance of 2012. Until then, try to make the world a better place, and I will too.